Number eight, Hakeem Olajuwon. So let's go through the resume here quickly. Six-time first-team All-NBA, three-time second-team All-NBA, three-time third-team All-NBA, at a time when All-NBA first-team center was a hell of a hard thing to get. You had David Robinson, you had Patrick Ewing, you had, at the beginning of his career, you had late-stage Kareem, at the end of his career, you had early-stage Shaq. So those first-team All-NBA center spots were almost impossible. He won the MVP once. He was top five in the MVP six times. He was top seven 10 times. He's a two-time defensive player of the year. More on that in a moment. He's nine-time all defense. He has, he is, in my opinion, and I think it's inarguable, the best defensive player on this list. The only person who you could argue is a better defender all time is Bill Russell. And that's, it, it's, it's so different of a game back then. But it, in the last 50 years, he's the greatest defensive player. And I think because of that, he's become an underrated offensive player. We'll explain why. But he's 12th all time in points. He's ninth all time in steals. No other center is in the top 60. So all time steals, he's ninth. No other center is in the top 60. That is an interesting stat. It's unbelievable. He has the most blocks ever by 600. He has, I think, 3,800 blocks. Second most is 3,200. So think about that. The guy who's in second place on the all-time blocks list would need to have four more seasons of two blocks a game to catch a king. Impossible. So he's the greatest defensive player. Second Second on the all-time blocks list. Oh, gosh, I should know that off the top of my head, but I don't. So let's find out together. We will find out together in real time. I did Kimbe Mutombo. Yeah. Did Kimbe Mutombo, who, by the way, defensive player of the year, who Shaq annihilated in the 01 finals we were talking about. Mutombo's at 3,200. Akeem's at 3,800. So now let's get into... Akeem's playoff resume because everyone remembers the two rings. I don't think they quite remember who he went through for those two rings, but they certainly don't remember the fact that I think most people don't know Akeem went to the finals before 1994. So we'll get into it. 1985, he is a rookie. They are in game five of round one against Utah. Keep in mind this when round one's best of five. So it's, you know, do or die game. As a rookie, in his first elimination game, 32 points, 14 rebounds, 6 blocks. But they lose. He's a rookie. At that point in time, nobody was questioning the Akeem over Michael Jordan draft pick. Nobody. Akeem was the no-doubt guy. 1986, year two, second year, or obviously in his second year, he's in the finals. He started the playoffs off with 29 points, 15 rebounds, 4 blocks. He started round two off with 38 points, 16 rebounds, four assists, six steals, five blocks. Almost had a five-by-five game in the playoffs in his second year to go along with 38 points. One assist shy of one of the only five-by-five games. That's where that's so much more important than a triple-double. That's where you have at least five of every category. And he would have done it with 38 points. Averaged. For that round two series, averaged 29 points, 13 rebounds, three assists, two steals, four blocks. Can you imagine a dude averaging four blocks for a series today? (laughs) Okay. To go up 2 1 on the defending champion Lakers, who had Kareem and Magic and Worthy, to go up 2 1 on them, he put up 40 and 12, averaged for the series 31 11 with four blocks and outplayed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's in his second year. In his first finals game ever against the 86 Celtics, the team that I don't argue, but some people argue is the single greatest team ever. He had 33 points, 12 rebounds. Facing elimination, down 3-1 in game five against what some people would argue is the greatest team ever. 32 points, 14 rebounds, and eight blocks to keep his season alive. Average 24, 12, and th- with three blocks for the series, again, against 
So he beats the defending champion Lakers and Kareem and Magic and then loses in six to the 86 Celtics. 1987, in round one, almost, I, well, I'll just tell you what he averages for round one. This is, and some of this Akeem stuff, it's just so consistently just outstanding across the board that I just have to give you series averages instead of individual games because he didn't have a ton of the Shaq explosion 45-point games. It was just for a series, like in round one, he averages 29, 27 points, nine rebounds, four assists, three steals, five blocks. Dude, average three steals and five blocks. Eight stocks per game in a playoff series. Round two against Seattle in a game they lose in double overtime. He had 49 points, 25 rebounds, and six blocks, and they lost. 1988, round one, lost. This is, this is one of the most impossible. This is, you could win some money in a bar if you found the right way to phrase this as a tri- trivia question. In round one in 1988, the Rockets lost to the Mavericks three games to one. Despite the fact that Akeem Olajuwon for the series in the four games, and they only won one, averaged, 38 points and 17 rebounds. He had a 40 and 15 in a loss with the in game four to get eliminated. The only game they won, he had 41 points, 25 rebounds. So 1988 to 1992, he never got out of round one. In those playoff years, he averaged 26 points, 14 rebounds, two assists, two steals, four blocks. Never got out of round one. We talk about a guy that this was Akeem once Sampson was done, essentially. Akeem Rockets was LeBron Cavs the first time around. Got to the final super early, was unbelievable, always produced, and the team stunk. They couldn't put the right pieces around it. And now LeBron wasn't losing in round one, which is why LeBron's higher on this list. But 26, 14, 2, 2, and 4 over a four-year average in the playoffs without ever winning a series. So now now we get to the meat of Akeem, which is these next three years. 1993, finally gets out of the first round. How does he get out of the first round? He has a 31-point, 21-rebound, seven-block game. For that series, to finally win his first series in five years, he averages 29 points, 15 rebounds, five assists, two steals, and six blocks per game. They lose to Seattle in overtime in game seven by three points when Akeem puts up in that game seven, 23 points, 17 rebounds, nine assists. So if he was not out of this world, they couldn't win. Luckily for them, over the next two years, he is, in fact, out of this world. And listen to the numbers, and then at the end, listen to who he beats as he goes on to win his two rings and two finals MVPs. 1994, he wins league MVP. He wins defensive player of the year. Michael Jordan has retired, so the whole league knows. So for Barkley, for Ewing, for David Robinson, who hadn't won at that point, for Stockton, for Malone, for Kemp, for Peyton, for Akeem, for all these guys, hey, this should be our chance. So what does Akeem do? Round one against Portland. I I can't even give you the individual games. I'll give you one of them. But averages for round one, 34 points, 11 rebounds, five assists, two steals, four blocks. He had a game in that series, another this close to five by five game, this one with 46 points. He had a 46, eight, four, four, and six against the defending Western Conference champions, Phoenix Suns and Charles Barkley. He averages for the series. 29 points, 14 rebounds, five assists, four blocks. Including in game seven against Charles Barkley and the defending Western Conference champion Suns, game seven, 37 points, 17 rebounds, five assists. Utah just knew they were drawing dead. Utah, he throws up a 41 13 and six in game two and demoralizes them. And then in the finals, he holds Patrick Ewing, an all time great center to 19 points per game. His team is up two with two seconds left in game six. John Starks, who is the Knicks' second best player and great three-point shooter for the era, 
has seemingly an open three to win the title. And Akeem go-go gadgets it and blocks it. And they end up winning the title in game seven. He averages for the finals 27 points, nine rebounds, four assists, four blocks. First ring, first finals MVP. The next year, this team is the sixth seed. They, they are not that good of a team. They trade for Clyde Drexler midway through the year. They're kind of scuttling. Next year, to start his finals defense, puts up 45 points, eight rebounds, six assists, two steals, three blocks. But they're down 2-1. Again, this is a best of five. So they're facing elimination in game four. He puts up 40. Game five, do or die game, puts up a 33 and 10 to advance. He's now two, so he's won two do or die games in that in his finals defense. Then uh, averages in that series against Utah, against Stockton and Malone, 35, nine and four. The next round, they're down 3-1 to Barkley and Phoenix. They're down 3-1 despite the fact that in games three and four, Akeem scored 36 and 38. They win three straight games, three more elimination games, when game five, six, and seven, Akeem averages 30, 12, and six in those three games. They're now 5-0 in elimination games. Then, and this is unbelievable, this you got to look up on YouTube. That year, David Robinson won MVP. And they gave David Robinson the MVP in, on the court like they used to do before the series against Akeem, before one of the games. And Akeem, who's an all-time nice guy, just tortured him tortured him for the entire series, scored 40 three times, <laughs> averages 35, 13 rebounds, five assists, four blocks against the MVP of the league, David Robinson. Go ahead. How many times did you, how many times did you say you won Defensive Player of the Year? Akeem, twice. He won two Defensive Players of the Year, could have won more. Yeah, could have won a hell of a lot. Sounds like, yeah. No, they, but they, they spread it around a bit. In the finals, playing... A young guy, you may have heard of him, Shaquille O'Neal in the Orlando Magic. He scores at least 31 points in every single game, averages for the finals, 33 points, 12 rebounds, six assists, two steals, two blocks to sweep out Shaq and win finals MVP. Okay, so here is the totality of it. Again, remember what I said about how Ewing and Shaq and David Robinson and Patrick Ewing and John Stockton, and Carl Malone, uh, and it, Charles Barkley, all these guys, when Jordan's gone, they're like, here's our chance. Akeem Olajuwon beat every single one of those guys to win those two rings. In those two championship runs, he averaged 34 points, 11 rebounds, four assists, two steals, three blocks on 53% shooting. And beat, oh, Clyde Drexler too. Beat Clyde Drexler, then Drexler joined him. Beat Barkley twice. Beat Stockton Malone twice. Beat Patrick Ewing. Beat David Robinson. Beat Shaquille O'Neal. King of the mountain. Beat them all. No easy routes, no easy paths. Beat everybody who is most of those guys, except for Drexler who joined him, and Robinson who got one later with Tim Duncan and obviously Shaq. Most of those guys, Finished their careers ringless because Akeem won both of those. In 96, the, 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 keep in mind, Akeem, we started this story in 1985. So now it's been a decade. And over that decade, from year two to his second ring, he was 29, 12, 3, 2, and 4 on 53%. A 10-year run in the playoffs, winning finals MVP twice, winning two championships, getting the three finals from year two to his second title averages in the playoffs, 29 points, 12 rebounds, three assists, two steals, four blocks. And that's the story of Akeem Olajuwon. He's the greatest defensive player I've ever seen. And one could argue the greatest defensive player anyone's ever seen. He's the eighth greatest player of the last 50 years. Let's get to a quick Akeem call. -up. Nick, clearly my time on First Things First with you is beginning to have a positive effect because you're putting Akeem Olajuwon ahead or higher than Shaquille O'Neal is an inspired decision and one that I wholly agree with. But please tell us, why did you do it? Here's why I did it. 
Shaq's apex obviously was higher. However, Akeem's sustained excellence to go along with the fact that Shaq was a good and, for a brief period of time, great defender. Akeem was the greatest defender. And the fact that they played each other in the finals and Akeem swept them. (laughs) For all those reasons, it is very close. It is one of the most hotly contested arguments. If you really care about this stuff, Shaq versus Akeem. I, I, I lean Akeem. And I think, I think the overwhelming defensive monstrous performances, plus, like I said, the guy is considered the greatest defender ever, yet over a decade of his prime in the playoffs, averaged a touch under 30 points per game. What is he, 12th all time in points in the regular season? So it's not like the guy couldn't score. He's the eighth greatest player over the last 50 years. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.